Hello, Donnell Rourke with For the Health of It. And today I want to talk to you about the seven types of stinking thinking. So you want to stop your stinking thinking and get the results that you want in your life, in your relationship, in your career. See, the words that you say and the pictures that you create in your mind and the mind of others that are around you will determine whether you're happy, peaceful, prosperous, and have a fulfilling life. Now, as I go through this list of the seven types of stinking thinking, this is not about blaming. This is not about showing you where you're doing wrong. It is all about helping you have an understanding because it's only when you understand something that you can change it if you choose. But until you understand it, you don't know that you need to change it. So let's go over these seven types of stinking thinking and see if there's anything that can help you, assist you to have this life that you say that you want. So let's begin. The first one, that we're going to talk about is over generalizing the words never always when we hear those they're they're bossy they're very judgmental and they're wrong now so instead we want to say something like sometimes you sometimes do that you often do this that's going to be more accurate and less confrontational. So just switching from always to sometimes, from you never to often, it just makes it a little less confrontational. Now, the second type of stinking thinking is over emotional reasoning. Now, what does this mean? This means that you're relying on your feelings to determine your action and your decision. Someone does something to you and all of a sudden you're pissed off and now you're acting from a place of anger. You know, when you act, react from that place, what happens? You know, I want you to ask yourself, what is the thought that leading you to this feeling and is it justified? Okay, so let's think about how you react when you are mad and you're upset or hurt? Do you honestly make good decisions? Mm, not always. Mm. Remember, sometimes, <laughs> often. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so when you're in that anger state, that hurt state, and we make these decisions that aren't best for our life, we need to take a step back. Because now I want you to think about how do you react when you're calm, peaceful, coming out of a place of love? How different does that look? Now, which one, honestly, think about it. Which one is going to give you the results that you truly say you want? Hmm? Again, this is not a blame. This is not me pointing fingers. This is giving you awareness. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the third one. The third one is making demands. We use words like you must do this. You should do this. You ought to. Those are demanding words. Instead, let's use words like wish, prefer, want. These reflect your feelings and your desires. That the key thing I like to ask my clients to think about when they are about to make a decision is what do they want and how do they want to feel? Those two questions should be in the front of your mind when you are having a confrontation. What do you want? out of this situation? What is the end result that you truly want? And how do you want to feel? 
So when you start telling, speaking your feelings, I want this, that helps the person understand that you are not out to make a demand on them of what you demand they do. You're letting them know of deep down inside, this is a need that you would like to have fulfilled. This is something that you would like, you would prefer, you would wish would happen. That gives them the opportunity to fulfill that wish, to give you your wants and desires. But when you start saying you must, you should, you ought to, then you're demanding. They put up a resistance. I know I do. The minute someone comes to me and tells me what I need to start doing and how I should do it, my wall goes up. But when they come to me with a, I wish, I prefer, I would want, that gives me information of their desires. And then I can choose to fulfill them or not. But I no longer just automatically put that wall up without even considering what they asked. All right, I'm gonna scroll down here. Yes, I am reading off of my computer. All right, number four. That one is gonna be the fortune telling, the, the catastrophe, the doom and gloom, predicting the negative future. You cannot predict the future. You cannot predict the way Anything is going to happen around you. The only thing that you can predict is how you react. You can only predict the way you react in the future. That's it. That's it. If the worst did happen, how can you react in a constructive way instead of a destructive way? It's I'm, I'm not telling you that if, if the worst thing happens that you've got to keep it all together. No, but you can have an understanding of you can't change the situation, but you can either allow it to completely destroy you or you can allow it to build you up and make you stronger. That's all it is. It's truly understanding that the only thing you have control of is how you react to a situation. Sorry, but it's a conscious decision that only you can make. Nobody else can make it for you. All right, here's one, this one, who? Mind reader. How many is, honest, I'm a hypnotherapist and I'm not a mind reader. Are you a mind reader? No. So why do we think and act like we are mind readers? Like we assume, we assume what other people are thinking about us, you know? how they purposely are doing certain things to us. That's what we're thinking. Instead, what we need to do is we need to ask the person if they are thinking about what you think they're thinking about. If they truly believe that, you know, let me give you a situation. If your boss calls you in and says you didn't do a good job on this project, did you take it personally that you're not doing a good job at all or just on that particular project? Are you thinking that your boss has it in for you? And you know, you start going over all of your um, argument of what you're gonna tell him and why you did this. You're, you're starting to think, create a scenario of what you think they are thinking. Most of the time, you don't even know what you're thinking. You're just on autopilot. So how in the world can you th think what other people are thinking? How can you know what they're thinking? You can't. So that one that one should be kind of easy of asking yourself, really? How, I don't even know what they're thinking. Let's ask them. Let's get some clarity on this. That's the only way you can. It's one of the steps that I teach in my anti-bullying uh, program is when you think somebody is bullying you, when you think somebody is treating you in a way that you don't particularly like and you, in your mind, you go through the scenario of why they're doing it, just ask them, Did, 
Are you meaning, are you trying to hurt my feelings? If they say yeah, that gives you information. If they say no, then ask for clarification. That's it. So stop trying to be the mind reader and get clarification on what the person is truly thinking. And then maybe you can answer and react in the way that both of you can benefit from. All right, number six, noticing and remembering only the negative. Yes, I understand that one completely. So what happens is you pay little attention to the positive aspect of the situation and you can only focus on the negative. So when something negative happens around you, and it will, I'm gonna tell you, every day something negative is going to happen around you. You have a choice to put your focus on that negative situation. Or you can, let's say, look around the room where you're at and find five positive things. Redirect your mind, interrupt that circuit of the negative. And when you do that, you're going to notice that the situation around you changes because the energy changes to a positive one. So when something negative happens around you, try it today. It's going to be something small, nothing really big, just something small that's going to happen. And you're going to recognize, oh, I'm thinking about that negative thing over and over and over. Oh, what? What did Donnell tell me to do? Donnell told me to look around and focus on five positive things around me. Little tip, enjoy it. Enjoy that little tip that you are going to change by recognizing when you are focusing on negative and you're going to switch it by finding five positive. For every one negative thought you think, speak out five positive ones. Awesome. All right, number seven. <clears throat> Excess <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Excessive, I can't speak, let me take a drink. Mmm, coffee, love it. <laughs> excessive putting yourself down, excessive criticism. <clears throat> Only seeing your bad qualities. Anybody guilty of this? Hmm? Remember, you are perfectly imperfect. You know, stop bullying yourself. You we're guilty of this. We're all guilty of this. I was guilty of this for many, many years and I still catch myself, but what I do is I have to remind myself. I have to remind myself that I am enough exactly the way I am. And when I remind myself that I was created perfect, enough, and um, does that mean that my body functions top of the line and I look a certain way that my mind thinks I need to look? No. It just means that the creator created me exactly the way that he wanted. The creator created me in a way that I love and live exactly the way that he designed it, if I allow it. But when I go against who I am, the person I was created to be, to try to become something that the world wants me to be, that's when I start having those bullying thoughts because I can't meet the world's expectations. There's only one expectation that I need to meet and that's from, for me, my God. And so when I reach his expectations of what he wants for me and that's just understanding and knowing that I'm enough exactly the way that I was created. When I got that, wow, my life changed because you know what? He doesn't make mistakes. No. <laughs> God does not make mistakes. You're not a mistake. So stop treating yourself like you are. Start loving yourself. Say, I 
am enough. Always have been. Always will be. Well, thank you for going over the seven stinking thinkings and how to change it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.